here securing the perimeter. Hello and welcome to your favorite channel, Television Nigerian. It's so nice to have you back again on Security Dozier, the program that focuses on security issues in and around the country, as well as efforts of security agencies in the fight against criminality and the defense of the territorial integrity of Nigeria. My name is Lawrence Aldu. You can watch the program live on TVN.news or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Television Nigerian. In the past week, the Nigerian military has come hard on some aid agencies who have been alleged to be indirectly supporting insurgent activities in the Northeast with funds and groceries. Among many other security issues will be our focus on security dossier after this break. The Nigerian Army wishes to inform the general public and all interested qualified candidates of the commencement of online registration for the 79 regular recruit intake for both trades and non trades men and women. Interested candidates are advised to log on to the recruitment website https.recruitment.army.mil.ng to complete the online registration from 7th October to 29th November 2019. Applicants must be a Nigerian by birth and possess a national identity card as well as other basic qualifications. On completion of training, all successful recruits will be prepared for induction into the Northeast Theater of Operations. Applicants are also to note that Nigerian Army recruitment is free. Join the Nigerian Army and let us fight terrorism to restore Nigeria's glory and honor. Brigadier General Ayola Abuaba, Director of Army Recruitment, Resettlement and Reserve, announcer. The war against insurgency in Nigeria has assumed a more critical dimension with reports of the Nigerian military clamping down on some aid agencies working in the northeast of the country. Action against Honga had its operational facilities sealed, and this was followed by Mercy Corps. And the army has said the affected groups have been involved with insurgent activities as well as providing information, funding, and groceries to ISWAP terrorists in the region. This too has caused the public to complain of the military's tact. And with me on the program today to do justice, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, is an international television journalist, Daniel Funard. He was here before and he's here again. Mr. Funard, you're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me on Security Dossier again today. Lawrence, I'm glad to join you. Uh, Mr. Funard, you have seen in recent days activities of the military against aid workers in the northeast of Nigeria. What could be responsible for this action? Yes, I think, uh, I think the serious problem we're looking at right now uh, really revolves around communications. Uh, there is a narrative that keeps getting out there that is negative uh, about the Nigerian military, and they need a, a stronger overall strategy of how to counter that. There have been many uh, strong victories recently. In Tumbas, in the Lake Chad region, they, the, the uh, Boko Haram were routed uh, including uh, several trainers uh, that are believed to have come from ISIS from the Middle East. Uh, the the uh, uh, science and technology minister had praise for the uh, amazing achievements that the Nigerian military has had in uh, technology and innovation uh, in terms of their equipment and their abilities. And I think these need to be uh, brought forward as a focus uh, by the Nigerian military so that some of these other allegations will fall by the wayside. Do you think the military is on track uh, clamp, clamping down on these uh, agencies despite uh, public outcry? Yes, Lawrence, I think there is a role for the government in regulating and, uh, and overseeing these NGOs that operate in Nigeria. Uh, I don't see any reason why there couldn't be legislation that, that uh, mandates that their activities be somehow uh, documented uh, in terms of where they've gone and who they've spoken to, uh, even if it's a, on a confidential basis, so that people will have confidence that they're operating in Nigeria uh, under a mandate that is uh, pro-Nigeria, uh, um, pro-citizen. Uh, I think that there is a, a perception now that the, the NGOs are very anti-military, 
Uh, and really, what they should be working for is the good of, of every Nigerian. These are serious allegations that certain organizations are giving aid and comfort to who is basically an enemy of the state. Uh, I think that this needs to be pursued, though, under the rule of law. Nigeria is a country that follows the rule of law. The Nigerian military has worked very hard to show people that they are operating under the rule of law and all that they're doing in fighting the Boko Haram. I think it's time that, that the rule of law be applied to any other actors in the region. A civil society group, the Save Humanity Advocacy Center, SHOCK, has cautioned France to desist from its unholy union with members of the dreaded Boko Haram sect aimed at undermining the security of Nigeria. The reaction is coming on the heels of a recent report by the New York Times which claimed the insurgents bought some sophisticated weapons from France. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the executive secretary, Comrade Ibrahim Abubakar, warned France and any country that it may be using as proxy to prop up Boko Haram by using them as a conduit to deliver arms and military gears to the terrorists to desist forthwith. You must have come across the reports that said Boko Haram insurgents have acquired sophisticated drones in recent times. The reported hardware are presently capable of recognizance, intelligence, gathering and spy missions. It's a matter of time before they escalate to using these drones that are capable of carrying out attacks. We find expedient to believe the report because it was widely syndicated by Western-owned media, which are known to run propaganda for the, in, in the interest of Boko Haram in the past. The group further urged the international community to ask France the pertinent questions before it becomes too late. We're imploring the world to ask France the pertinent question before it comes too late. Whether by default or by accident, it's a matter of time before Boko Haram tests the weapons France is arming them with on other nations, possibly in the West. Hopefully, by that time, the world would not be in a quandary over who to hold accountable for such disaster should it unfold. We use this opportunity to warn France and any other country it may be using as proxy to proper Boko Haram by using them as conduit to deliver arms and military gear to the terrorists within the Nigerian territory. On its part, the Nigerian military must repeat the device blows it has dealt terrorists within the Northeast in the past. Eliminating the new threats posed by Boko Haram is crucial to the safety of citizens in Borno and other parts of the country. It must punish the terrorists with the same intensity that had made it impossible for them to overrun the country as planned by the country secretly sponsoring and supporting them. It must continue with the strategy of super camps since this appears to be effective and has rattled the sponsors of Boko Haram to both increase weapon supply to the terrorists and reopen the media front in the war against terrorism. Comrade Ibrahim further called on nations around the Lake Child Basin to make the region unconducive for terrorists to thrive. Lawrence Audu, TVN News. As the Nigerian army commenced the court-martial of former General Officer Commanding 8th Division Sokoto, Major General Hakim Otiki, for alleged diversion of 400 million Naira security funds, the one-stop gallant commander is wheeled into the courtroom to answer questions regarding his involvement. Disclosing the convening order, President of the General Court-Martial, Lieutenant General Lamidia Dilshun said, the proceedings will be guided by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and relevant authorities. Convening further for a general court martial by Lieutenant General T.Y. Ratai, Chief of Army Staff, Nigerian Army, under Section 131, Subsection 2D, 
of the Armed Forces Act, CAP A20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. Pursuant to the powers conferred on me by Section 131, Subsection 2D of the Armed Forces Act, CAP, 20, CAP A20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, I hereby convene a general court martial. The general court martial is composed below. As composed below is to assemble at Army Headquarters Command Mess 1, Asokoro, Abuja, on 9 September 19 for the purpose of trying the accused person at paragraph 3 below. But for certain exigencies, it was shifted to today, 17th September 2019. The court martial which commenced on Tuesday at the command officer's mess at Sokoro Abuja is led by the Chief of Policy and Plans at the Nigerian Army Headquarters, Lieutenant General Lamidi Adeoshun, and seven other Major Generals as members with Major while the Defense Council is led by Barrister Okechuku Ajungwa. From the Command Officer's Mess at Sukuru Abuja, Lawrence Aldu, TVN News. Welcome back from that break, and I hope uh, you had a good time watching those analyses. Before we go, here are some of the reactions I have received from some of our viewers. Aliko Alkali from Kanu says, Good morning, sir. How do I get to know when TVN is live? I watch your program on the South African and on the xenophobia in South Africa last week. And it was exciting as it was incisive. Thank you very much, Ms. Alkali. I have another one here from Bola Salami, all the way from Eloran, Kwara State. Said, Hello, Lawrence. I love your program, especially your report on the alleged secret uh, military symmetry in the Northeast. Reporting from there gave me cold shivers, but in the end, I'm excited that you were able to establish the fact. Keep the good work going. I will appreciate it if I can get to watch details of or more stories to unfold. Thank you. Thank you, Bola, for your, your comment. And uh, Kevin DeMilla from Brussels wrote, he said, Hi, your program has given me insight into the reality on ground and the efforts of the Nigerian military in battling insurgency. It would be nice if you can take a look at the activities of the customs as well. Thank you, Kelvin. And Yaknan Bakturi from Abuja says, I love your program, but I advise you to introduce the topic uh, liaising with Nigerian security services and other sister agencies. Mr. Bakturi, that is being taken into consideration. I assure you we will do that in a subsequent uh, edition. And Daniel Atai in Abuja said, on security dossier, I want us to know that in as much as sovereignty is secured and integrated by the armed forces, the strength or weakness of a nation largely depends on the patriotic discharge of its effective judiciary. Thank you very much, Dan, for that apt and uh, uh, spot on uh, response. Well, thank you all for those contributions and do keep them coming. We sincerely appreciate your input. As the year draws to a close, it is important for everyone to remain security conscious. Report any strange movement around your vicinity to law enforcement agents. If you see something, say something. This is where we draw the curtains on the program today until we come your way again with another exciting package of security dossier. I am Lawrence Audu. Bye for now. Security dozier securing the perimeter.